Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's just about 1230. So I'm going to begin our program. My name is Ann Mason. I am the executive director of the Plymouth Antiquarian Society. Our mission is to preserve and share local history. And I'm so delighted that we can do that with you virtually today. This program is part of our lunchtime conversation series, just a chance for us to meet with other local historians to talk about other collections in the area and our own collection to hear a little bit about research that's happening into Plymouth's past. And we love, love that you are here with us. If you are viewing this program via Zoom, please do use the chat feature and the Q&A feature to send us your comments, to say hello, to send your questions. I'll be monitoring those throughout the program. And then if you're watching the Facebook stream, you can send us your questions through the comments field. So please do do that. Do that. We'd love to hear from you and um, know what you're thinking. If you missed our previous two lunchtime conversations, they are available. The recordings are available on demand on our website, PlymouthAntiquarian.org slash lunchtime dash conversations. So we had a wonderful conversation in February with our college intern, Sophie Kuntz, on exploring women's history in our own archives. And then in March, we had food historian Paula Marcoux sharing with us. Before we begin, I just want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, our corporate sponsors for 2021, who are really providing vital support for the Antiquarian Society this year. Um, I'd like to thank our gold sponsor, Tracy Chevrolet Cadillac, all of our silver sponsors, bronze sponsors, Women Who Roar sponsors, and preservation sponsors. So thank you to, so much to all of these businesses and community organizations who make our work possible. As we look ahead, I'm delighted to share that we will be holding a lunchtime conversation in May, Wednesday, May 12th at 1230. We will be once again having a Zoom webinar and the topic will be historic clothing and textiles. And joining me will be Catherine Tarleton, who is a local textile conservator who has worked on some of the dresses and on a sampler in the Antiquarian Society's collection. So we'll be highlighting those objects and talking about caring for historic clothing, um, caring for historic textiles, and also what they can tell us about the past. So I hope you'll be able to register for that uh, Zoom webinar through our website, PlymouthAntiquarian.org, or again, we'll stream it live on Facebook so you can always find us there as well. In addition to the lunchtime conversations, we have an ongoing series of first Saturday history tours which we present in partnership with Pilgrim Hall Museum. And those are free and virtual at 1 p.m. on the first Saturday of every month. So coming up on May 1st at 1 p.m., we will be um, exploring some of the local indigenous history with Melissa Ferretti, who is the chair lady of the Herring Pond Wampanoag tribe. And so you won't want to miss this. This will be a really um, wonderful virtual tour that Melissa will present. So I hope you can join us then. And of course, it will be recorded and available later if you're not available at that time. All right. Well, now I am going to end my sharing here. And I want to welcome our, uh, our, our Presenter today are the, the wonderful Julie Burry, who is joining us from the History Room at the Plymouth Public Library. Julie, I'm sure, is known to many of you. Um, if you visited the library and you may see her at the reference desk, um, she actually has a long, um, many years of experience in the historic preservation field as well. Um, she was involved in the management of historic house museums. Uh, she co-owned a historic preservation company, and um, she continues to serve on the Historic District Commission here in Plymouth. Um, and now she is the archivist for the History Room and Archives at the library, and that's her um, focus for today's tour. She's going to take us on a little walk through the library, the History Room, and share with us some of the resources there for learning about local history and genealogy. So Julie, take it away. Okay. 
Thank you, Anne, first off. Thank you for inviting me um, uh, today. And so looking forward to showing everybody the resources that we have at the library, specifically the history room. Um, so uh, what I would like to do is kind of split this into two sections. Um, the first section is just, I'm gonna, we'll see how this goes. I wanna do a little walking tour of the history room um, and show you the Reverend Bartlett history room at the library and um, talk specifically about some of the resources that we have here. Um, and then I've got um, a slide presentation um, of some of the resources that we have in other locations in the library. Um, so uh, just to start out, being in Plymouth, we are um, very lucky that we have a lot of visitors that come to the library that are doing uh, genealogical research and a lot of people, local people that are doing research um, on the Plymouth history. So that's um, the bulk of what our resources are at the, at the library. Um, pretty equally split between people, uh, between genealogical and local history resources. Um, all right, so I am not a fan of selfies, but I am going to give you all a tour and I'm going to go as slow as I can. Um, we are currently in the Reverend Bartlett history room at the Plymouth Public Library. And I'm gonna back up and we're gonna to try to get a little picture of Reverend Bartlett. Oh my goodness, I'm awful at this. There we go, there he is. So Reverend Bartlett was um, originally from Indiana, um, uh, but he was a resident of Plymouth for over 60 years. Um, he was a minister and he actually served in China for a number of years. And um, when he came to Plymouth to settle, um, he reconnected with his pilgrim uh, ancestry and became quite a, um, an expert and a prof prolific writer. He wrote many books on the subject. Um, and then, um, the, he was the one that gave us a very generous uh, bequest to start the history room at the library. Um, and so that is why the history room is named after him. And um, in addition to um, some of his personal items, his books and things, um, you can kind of see how his interest was split between um, early colonial, early, um, Plymouth history. Um, these are some of his own personal items that he um, donated to us. But we also have some of the items that he received when he was traveling and working in China. So we have some very lovely silk embroideries from, uh, from China that were donated to us. So there we go. I hope this is not too um, jerky for you all. There we go. Um, so then, just to talk about some of the resources that we have um, in this room, we have um, down on the bottom here, we have some of the, um, I'm not sure if everybody knows that there is a database, a statewide database of um, historic properties that was done about the 90s. Um, which you can access through the Mass Historical Commission website. Um, and you can look up um, properties and um, get some information on the history of the historic um, buildings. So we have printed out all of the properties uh, for Plymouth um, and they're here uh, so that you can access them, but you can also access them digitally. Um, we also have a collection um, called Then and Now, that's the, these um, binders right here. And this was a, a, an, uh, a column that was done in the Old Colony Memorial for many years um, that um, pictures of Old Plymouth 
were juxtaposed with uh, pictures of uh, New Plymouth. And so a lot of history, um, specifically about a lot of the um, buildings downtown Plymouth. Um, so that pretty much covers what we have here. I'm going to take us next into the bulk of our holdings in the library for the history room. Um, this is the main um, collection room. Um, but first off, I just want to have a stop right here. Um, and we have a number of publications that are available for people when you visit the history room. Again, dealing mostly with um, genealogy resources around, from around the state and some local history um, organizations as well. And so then just going to talk a little bit about um, our book collection. Um, so like I said, most of our collection deals mostly with uh, genealogical research and local history research. Um, so let's see, that is what we have right here. Um, I'm going to go down to where we have um, our main genealogical section starting in the 929s, Dewey number. Um, and so we have um, the two main uh, genealogical organizations that do um, research publications. There's the um, Mayflower Society. Um, we have their publications here that are very popular when people are doing research. Um, it is the, the Mayflower Descendant and we also have the full range of the what's called the silver books and the silver books cover the um mayflower families um up to the first five or the first five generations um so if you are doing genealogical research and you want to trace back to the mayflower if you can get close most of the, the next the last five generations has already been done for you so this is um, a popular resource a lot of people come to use the silver books um, we also have um, the new england historic genealogical society is the genealogical library that is up in boston we have their publications as well um, we have the register, National, uh, the HisGen register right here. And then we have quite a number of individual family genealogies. So um, let me see, I'll just pull one out. We've got the, fam uh, the Fuller family right here. Um, so this is another great resource for people doing um, genealogy work. So this is a lot of the um, Plymouth families, um, individual genealogies. Um, and then we have a lot of the Brown books. These are the um, series of vital statistics books that were made um, part of a WPA project um, where all the towns in Massachusetts, their earliest records were compiled up to about 1850 and published. And so this is a lot of the birth, death, marriage records of every town in Massachusetts. Um, so that's what the Brown books are. Um, so that is also very helpful for people. Um, we also have the Migration Begins books right here. Um, that covers some of the early history of Plymouth and also for Boston um, when Massachusetts Colony started. And then we start getting into a lot of the um, early history of um, the colony and some Revolutionary War and some Native American resources. And 
Ooh, actually, maybe while we're talking about Revolutionary War, I am just going to give you guys a shot of these four filing cabinets right here. I'm very excited about these four filing cabinets. This is the Parting Ways collection that we have here at the library. And um, for those of you not uh, familiar with it, the Parting Ways um, settlement was um, an early, um, just after the Revolutionary War uh, settlement of four families of freedmen, African-American freedmen, um, that existed in Plymouth up until just about 1905. So for a lot of years, a lot of generations, there was this um, community of um, freedmen. And so what is in these four cabinets are, it's the, the genealogy uh, work, the survey that was done of those four families. Um, and I'm excited because we just got this moved up from the back end of the library where it was difficult to access, just got it um, moved to the um, history room so that it can now be much more easily uh, used by researchers. And I've already started seeing a number of people coming in to use this resource. I find it very exciting. Um, so let's see, we start getting into some resources that deal with Plymouth County. And then for our local historians, these, the last section right in here, these are the books that deal with Plymouth history specifically. So we have all of the town annual reports. We have a lot of the phone registries. Um, and then we're just so blessed to have so many local authors dealing with local history. Um, and so that is um, a nice, well-used uh, collection. Um, and then just want to give you guys a quick shot of oh, our old faithful. Um, this is our old uh, microfilm reader. Um, so we do have microfilm um, collection, a lot of the census uh, and um, one of the main things that people tend to use here is we have, as far as I know, the only full run set of the microfilm of our local newspaper, Old Colony Memorial, which started in 1822. Um, unfortunately, it's not indexed, um, but we do have it and we use that um, multiple times during the week, people are um, coming in with research that they're doing and looking for obituaries and things like that. Um, but you're not, well, when we get to the slides, I'll show you my, my new favorite toy. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of, there we go. Um, we have a, also a collection of historic maps of um, Plymouth and Plymouth County. Um, and I love historic maps, so um, I spend a good chunk of time going through that collection. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, what we have here at the library in house. And this is, unless there are any questions, I was going to switch over and talk a little bit about the resources that we have in the other areas of the library. Yeah, Julie, while you're, while you're switching over, one question that came up was just about the um, location of the history room and, and the protocols for accessing it, especially as the library is on a different schedule um, this year. So, so how do you actually get in there? <laughs> sure. Okay. So um, we're so very happy that we are open again to the public. We missed our people. Um, so, and I have to say that as um, the, the protocols change, so do our hours. 
Um, so the best thing is to go to our website, um, PlymouthPublicLibrary.org, just to check and see what our hours are. Um, to access the history room, we're still asking people to make an appointment ahead of time. Um, so in one of my slides, I've, I've got our phone number and our email and our web, uh, web page um, where you can contact us and um, just ask for the reference department and make an appointment so that you can um, come up and use any of these resources that I'm talking about today. Um, the history room is actually located in the on South Street. Um, at the main branch of the library, um, and it is um, upstairs. So if you're looking at the library and you've got that lovely round room, it's actually an octagon, um, right in the front, the, um, that is the Bartlett room. That's where I'm sitting right now. Um, so if you wanna access it, yep, just come by the reference and um, it is locked. So we just need to open that up for you when you come and have your appointment. Um, and if you have something that you're researching ahead of time, if you can let me know so that I can pull together some resources for you, I'm happy to do that. Um, okay, let's see, I'm going to... Okay, so here we are in the um, Reverend Bartlett History Room. This is the, uh, the first room when you walk in. This is the octagon room that we just went through. Um, but now I wanna talk about some of the things that are in other locations within the library. Um, so we have downstairs in the reference area, um, we have two collections that, that circulate. You can check these out. Um, so we have a genealogy collection, um, and this is more of an instructional collection. It's a how-to, a lot of how-to books. Um, so if you're doing your genealogy work and you get stumped on something, um, we have resources that may help you get over um, some clues on how to get over that. Um, a lot of books also on how to take care of your family photographs and documents as well. Um, and then also downstairs, we have um, our local history collection that does circulate. So I should have mentioned this, um, everything that is um, upstairs in the Reverend Bartlett History Room does not circulate. So you do need to be on site to use um, what I just showed you. But we also have this collection that does circulate. It has most of the titles that are in the um, Bartlett Room, um, just not a lot of the reference type of things like the, um, the Mayflower Descendant, the big series of books, the Silver Books, things like that. Um, but these are items that can be checked out, both of these collections. We've got a four week uh, loan period. Um, and so then, this is my new baby. I am very excited about this. So I showed you briefly on the tour our Old Faithful, um, but this is our, our new pizzazz. This is um, our new digital microfilm reader. Um, and I have been playing around with this. We got it just right before COVID hit. And um, so I've been able to jump on and really start working on this machine. I love it. It makes things so much easier. Um, it does have um, uh, optical character recognition or OCR. So it makes it, um, so it, digitize, it digitizes about 10 pages of microfilm at a time. And then you can search those 10 pages. So for our resource, like the Old Colony Memorial, where it's not indexed, um, this is just a step forward in doing research that you are able to search for by term, um, you know, 10 pages at a time, rather than really killing your eyeballs trying to read this. Um, the lovely thing is also it cleans up the microfilm a little bit. It, um, there are a lot more adjustments that can be made to make it much more readable. 
Um, and the, also the great feature is that um, you can, you know, clip and save um, different articles or things um, that off of the microfilm and you can save it onto a thumb drive or you can send it to your email um, or you can send it to the reference printer and have it printed out. So many more options. I'm thrilled with this. So um, microfilm isn't quite the chore that it used to be. So please come on down if you have any need. Um, so then next, um, we have different display cases throughout the library. And I'm using these to highlight the different collections that we have in our archives. Um, this one happens to be actually right in the history room. It's right behind me right now. Um, this one is um, some of the um, archeological uh, artifacts that came from the 1970s dig that happened at the Parting Ways settlement that I talked about earlier. Um, so the dig was done by James Dietz. Um, those in the archaeological world probably are very familiar with his name, um, but he talks about this dig in his book, In Small Things Forgotten, um, which we do have at the library if you're interested. Um, and then um, just right uh, on the landing, right above uh, the stairs to the second floor, we have another display case. Um, and currently I have um, some of the items from our uh, Brini collection. This was just recently donated to us, um, another collection that I'm so thrilled um, that the library was um, able to receive this. Um, so uh, Beltrando Brini, he was a uh, longtime resident of North Plymouth. And he was a steadfast friend of Bartolomeo Benzetti of the Sacco and Benzetti trial. Um, for those of you who may not know, uh, Benzetti did live in North Plymouth. And um, so there is this very strong Plymouth connection to this, um, this trial that was world famous. Um, so, um, Mr. Brini uh, spent a good chunk of his lifetime working to get um, Vanzetti's name cleared. And so what we have received are a number of his um, personal letters and um, books and things that he collected over the course of doing his work on this. Um, so in our display case, we have some of that on display. Um, so then next, um, we do that? Yes. So just, um, I showed you briefly a little bit about our, um, our historic map collection that we have, um, at the library. Um, and I had to show off one of my favorite. Um, this is the bird's eye map of Plymouth by George Walker. This is the 1910 one. Um, and there's also another one that is from 1882. They're utterly fantastic. They're incredibly detailed. Um, I highly recommend you guys um, taking a look at these. They're just a beautiful snapshot of um, Plymouth from that time period. Um, but we also have maps that deal with Plymouth County. Um, one of my favorites is um, the Walling map that was done in 1857. It's all of Plymouth County. Um, so here we are right here. This is Plymouth town and this is all of the county. Um, I, I think it's hard to convey how big this map is, um, but we have this on display in the library. This is downstairs on the first floor and it's right outside of our main um, meeting room, uh, the phalo room. It's on the wall there. Um, and it's big and it's lovely. It's incredibly detailed. Not only do we have this lovely map, but the real fantastic thing is all of these insets that we have here. And um, these are all um, details about the villages. 
Um, so it starts getting very detailed. Um, and then some of these great etchings as well of some of the buildings in the county. It's a great resource. I love it. Um, so just to some of the maps that we have here at the library. Oh, I failed to mention this one is on display at the, um, up on the second floor, right outside of the history room. Um, and I should mention, actually, these bird's eye maps, a lot of the Plymouth maps, um, if you go to the Library of Congress website, um, loc.gov, and you can search for these maps, it's great because you can zoom in on these and just see that incredible detail that I was talking about. You can just immerse yourself in these. I love it. Um, so then uh, some of the things that you can access, some of our resources that you can access um, electronically through your own computer. We have some of our collections that have been digitized. Um, we are members with um, Digital Commonwealth, which is a lovely organization that partners with Boston Public Library um, to help organizations and libraries get their um, collections digitized um, and then offer the, the hosting um, for these items so that they can be accessed. Um, so we had um, our, the town annual reports that I showed you briefly in the, um, in the history room. Um, the full run has been digitized and we also have our um, the high school local high school yearbooks that have been digitized um, i think there are like two years that were missing but other than that um, plymouth um, high schools north and south and i think we've got like silver lake or when it was with carver um, so those can um, those are also a fun um, blast in the past go through to look at those. Um, the other thing that we had digitized was the um, Portage Company newsletter. Um, and for those that may not know, um, Plymouth um, was once the home of the largest rope making um, manufacturer in the world. Um, this is a huge part of Plymouth's history. Um, it was um, a co huge company that was in North Plymouth, and um, it started in the 1840s, I believe, and then um, up until the 19, mid-1960s. Um, so for a good portion of Plymouth history, Plymouth Portage was a major employer for the town. Um, and it was very typical of those uh, companies at the time, it had um, a, its own culture. Um, they provided housing, they provided, they had a, um, its own library, they had their own cafeteria, they had their own um, social hall. Um, so when you were a part of the Cordage family, um, you had a lot of resources that, um, that came with it. And one of them was this uh, company newsletter. And so we have that digitized as well. Um, so that is great to go back and look through as well. Um, some other things that we have digitized. Oh, and I should say these are all available if you go to archive.org. That is um, the platform that Digital Commonwealth uploads to. So, um, Anywhere in the country, you can just log into archive.org and you can access these resources. Um, so also uh, Plymouth Public Library, um, we have a two volume set of um, books compiling the history of Plymouth for in the 20th century. Um, it's, um, let's see. Well, this one is also um, available at archive.org, but um, everybody is just so well versed with the early story of Plymouth 
Um, so getting the story out about 19th and 20th century Plymouth, um, we have, uh, so that's why we digitized this and had this uploaded to tell a more uh, broad story of Plymouth. And then two more books. Um, we have the Burial Hill in the 1990s book that has also been digitized. Um, so this is a book that was the result of six years of work done on Burial Hill um, survey work and research. Um, so that you can access at um, archive.org. And then the other book is called Return of the Dead. And this is a compilation of letters and articles from the old colony memorial um, dealing with the um, Plymouth soldiers that served during the Civil War. Um, also available at archive.org. Um, so this is um, one of our uh, collections that has been digitized. Um, this is available through our website. Um, if you want to take a look at the whole collection, um, you can get that through our website, PlymouthPublicLibrary.org. And having that whole thing is important because if you just put in Plymouth Library, I think you get out to Indiana. Um, so these are the photographs that were done by Edward McLaughlin um, during the tercentenary celebration. Um, these are fantastic photos um, and they have been digitized in very high um, resolution. So again, these are great photographs that you can zoom in. You can really look at people's faces. Um, you can start zooming in on the buildings and see some of the architectural details on buildings that we don't have in the downtown anymore. Um, so we have the photos from the parade. Um, and this is actually the presidential um, cars right here. Um, President Harding uh, came for the tercentenary. Um, so these are his cars right here and part of the parade. And then this is part of the pageant that happened um, where, oh my goodness, it was like hundreds of people um, took part in this pageant and they just told the whole history of Plymouth. Um, and there were just actors galore and it was a lot of local people that were um, used to portray this, um, it's this history of Plymouth reenact it. Um, so here we have the um, signing of the Mayflower Compact. Um, this is a great um, snapshot of Plymouth at this time and how Plymouth, you know, celebrates its own story. Um, and so then some other things that you can access. Um, if you have a Plymouth Public Library library card, you can access these databases. Um, we have so many genealogical um, resources available with your library card. Um, so right now you have to be in the library to be able to access American Ancestors. This is the um, database that is um, produced by the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Um, but you currently have to be in the library to access that. Um, the next big one is Ancestry. We have the library edition of that. Um, and typically you have to be in the library in order to access this. But right now Ancestry is allowing um, home access with your library card um, so that you can do your research remotely now. Um, a few other um, databases that we have, we've got the um, Boston Globe Historical, which covers the years 1872 to 1984, and Boston Globe, the current, and it carries um, the years 1980 to the present. Um, so these are searchable databases um, that you can um, search by date, search by title, search by author. Um, they're very versatile. And um, over here, we've got Fold3. This is another database that's made by Ancestry. Um, this deals specifically with military 
history military documents. So if you're doing research on a family member who had um, military service, this would be the database that would help you. Um, we also have Heritage Quest. This is a database that initially really dealt with a lot of the um, census records and newspaper records around the mid-Atlantic, but more recently they've added a lot of content dealing with New England. Um, and so we, we have that now. And the last one is newspapers.com. Um, this is a database of um, newspapers that are a lot of the local small newspapers. Um, we have, I think they start, I think the earliest one is, well, 17th century. They start in the 17th century and um, go up to the current. Um, but these are a lot of the smaller, more obscure local newspapers. Um, that you can use in your genealogical research. All right. Oh, and I should mention, we are actually in the process of becoming um, a family search affiliate library. Um, so that is another resource that is going to be available to us. That is the um, Church of Latter-day Saints um, database, genealogical database. So we're in the process of signing up and um, once we get that going, I will let you all know on our website. Um, so um, one of the last things I wanted to talk about is the um, other exciting thing going on um, at the, um, uh, the history room is that we also have an archives. Um, and this is the bulk of my more recent work that I've been doing recently. Um, so we have boxes and boxes and boxes of things that um, get donated to the library. And we've got about 30, 40 years of accumulation of things dealing with Plymouth history. Um, but they've never really been cataloged in any kind of organized way. Um, so I have taken it upon myself to work through this. Um, I'm very excited that we have just received a, um, a grant um, from the state and um, other funding from the Plymouth Public Library Foundation um, to get the software and the scanners and the computer needed um, to start going through all of these boxes of items that we have and um, start getting them properly stored and um, getting them ready so that people can access them and use them in their research. Um, so while I've been going through um, all of these boxes that we have at the library, I have discovered some really fantastic gems. Um, we have some really great things that um, we can offer you. Um, I already talked about the Parting Ways collection and the Brini collection and the um, McLaughlin photographs. Um, but we, for some collections that I've found that are dealing specifically with Plymouth history, we also have the Summer Street Neighborhood Survey forms. And for those of you that may not know, uh, Summer Street and High Street and Spring Street used to be the location of um, some of our oldest housing stock in Plymouth that was removed in the 1960s as part of the urban development um, program. Um, and before th these buildings were demolished, these are a lot of our earliest um, houses, um, some 17th century, a lot of early 18th century houses. Um, so before they were demolished, um, there was a survey done of every house lot, every lot. Um, and we have those forms. Um, so we have the pictures and also the, um, uh, the dimensions of the buildings and descriptions of the interiors. Um, so in a way, you know, it, all is not lost. And um, what I'm really hoping to do at some point in the future is to get funding so that I can get that collection digitized as well. And I would love to recreate um, some sort of virtual tour 
of the Summer Street neighborhood. Um, I also discovered that we have a number of collections of local artists and authors. We have the Cyril Marshall drawings. Um, we have Catherine Alden pottery collection. We have drawings from the Black and White Club. Um, that was an art club that started back in the 1870s. Pretty sure it's still going, um, but we have some of the drawings from that club. Um, we have some of the books from uh, E.B. Garside, who is local author um, and longtime editor of the Old Colony Memorial. Um, and I mentioned earlier, we also have the Reverend Bartlett collection here as well. Um, and then we also have some collections dealing with um, some of the organizations and associations in Plymouth. So we have the Plymouth County Visiting Nurses Association. We have some of their records. And we also have the Plymouth Retired Teachers Scrapbooks, um, which are just fantastic to go through. Um, and then we also have the um, archives of the Plymouth Public Library itself. Um, and I know that there are gonna be so many more gems that I find as um, as we go through, um, I know that there are a lot of one of a kind manuscripts, um, a lot of photographs um, that we'll be finding and being able to make um, available to everybody soon. Um, let's see. Oh, so one of the other things that um, we're able to start doing again, um, now that the library, everybody's kind of uh, getting out there and um, corona um, is, um, the restrictions are easing, is um, a lot more programming. So I am going to um, start doing more programming dealing specifically with the history room and its collections. Um, so my first one um, is going to be April 27th at the end of this month at 11 o'clock. That's a Tuesday morning. And I, this is going to be probably a series. Um, I'm finding there's just so much to talk about with Plymouth Villages. There are so many of them. Um, and so part one, my first one, is going to be talking about Plymouth Center, where it all began. Um, and then part two uh, comes in the beginning of May. And I think the next villages that I will be looking at will be Wellingsley and Chiltonville. Um, and let me see. There we go. So this is my last slide. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, thank you, um, Anne, again, for the opportunity. Um, and just to state again, we would love to have you come visit the history room. Um, if you have need of any of the resources I just went over. Um, so we're still asking people to book appointments. So you can call our phone number and um, talk to us at the reference department or email us and we can make that appointment for you. Well, thank you, Julie. This has been really wonderful and absolute a pleasure just to have you share a little bit behind the scenes of what's in the history room and how to access them and congratulations on all of the work that you've been doing and congratulations on the grant you just received for your special collections i think that that's for me the most exciting because i've always wondered what's what's behind the closed door you know if only we could get in there and well, um, already you're, you're able to bring to light so many great collections um, that really, I think, are going to help us understand Plymouth's past um, in new ways. So thank you for that work that you're doing and your um, team is doing there. And I have a couple of questions that have come in. We, um, we had a question about people who are out of state. For, I, we actually have a lot of folks um, watching from out of state on our Facebook stream, and they're wondering if you have any kind of inventory or finding aid that they can access so that if they wanted to look for a specific um, item, a book, or perhaps they're researching a specific family line and trying to do their genealogy, do you have anything like that or should they just contact you directly? Sure. Well, and that is the um the crux of why I want to get the collection of the archives 
cataloged so that we can have that uploaded and people can actually see what we have. Yeah. Um, so for right now, what we do have cataloged and what is searchable is our book collection. Um, so again, if you go to our website, um, you can search the catalog and you can see what, um, what books we do have. But as far as um, the objects and things, that's still a work in progress. Um, I am uh, feeling so badly that I am remiss in mentioning that if people do have, we have um, a large portion of what we do is fulfilling um, research requests for people. Um, and I have a lovely group of volunteers um, that help me with that. I have a group that is very dedicated to genealogy and that are just so skilled um, and another group that are um, local historians. And um, so they help with them. Um, so we get requests from all over the country. People call up or email us um, with their questions. And I am so very lucky that I can pass that over to my crew of volunteers and they, they um, fulfill those requests. So, um, so if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to contact us. Um, one thing I should stipulate is that we don't do genealogy research um, for people. What we do is kind of help people, give people the resources to kind of get over a, a, a stumbling block that they're on. Um, but as far as, you know, being able to do any extensive um, uh, genealogies, producing a genealogy for people. We just, we don't have the staffing for that. I wish we did. Well, though, no, I mean, sometimes that's, that's what the library is there for, right? To help you figure yes. out what you need in order to answer the question that you have. So I know that I, I go to the, the history room in years past to look at the vertical files and to see, well, what else has been done on this on this subject? Is there anything that I can pull quickly to get a sense of it? And then um, I love the new microfilm reader. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for getting that for the library because it, it makes such a difference having that um, new machine. Um, one question that came in, um, well, one comment actually was from Plymouth Poet Laureate, uh, Stephen Delbos, who wanted to mention that there's a great local poetry collection in the history room as well. Yes, yes, thank you for mentioning that. Yes, we do. Um, in addition, we have a lot of great local um, cookbooks. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, from a lot of the local organizations that would produce cookbooks over the years, we, we have those as well. Um, so yes, again, great snapshots of um, the particular interests of the people of Plymouth. Um, and Anne, thank you again also for mentioning the vertical file. I forgot to mention that. Um, we have cabinets full of um, information on Plymouth history pulled from multiple um, sources, um, typically like from the old Colony Memorial articles. Um, so yes, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great resource. Um, well, I think the only other question that I saw come in was actually, how do you register for your um, It Takes a Village talk on April 27th? How, how do get, can they connect with you? Fantastic. Oh, thanks for asking. Um, so if you go to, again, to our website, um, PlymouthPublicLibrary.org and we've got up on the top our, that dark blue bar. I believe the very first thing says um, events. So if you click on that, it'll take you to our events page and you can see all of the lovely things that we are offering at the library, um, but you can sign up for the um, village program right there as well. But take a look at what else we have going on. Lots going on at the library. Yeah, and well, and uh, one big thing that's going on or will be will be launching on May 1st is our community yarn pop. And I, I know yes. this is not really related to history or archives or anything, but um, the Plymouth Bay Cultural District in partnership with Plymouth Harbor Knits has been um, creating this really wonderful community-wide display of all sorts of knitted, crocheted, other, other types of fiber art that is going to be popping up all over Plymouth. And 
creating these gardens. So, so um, gardens of uh, knitted flowers and crocheted bumblebees and all sorts of um, wonderful things. And so Plymouth Public Library is one of the locations where you can see a garden, as is the Hedge House, the Plymouth Antiquarian Society's Hedge House on Water Street. So we'll have a garden as well. And then um, just other spots throughout town where you can enjoy all of these um, knitted and crocheted creations by a lot of local community members. Um, and I see it's we actually have a, a question <laughs> about dropping off flowers at the library. Um, so I, I believe I would have to point you to the library's website because I don't know what the policy is for just dropping things off. Um, so we have people you know. that are coming. Um, okay. Yeah, actually in, in our big room, um, our big meeting room, the Phalo room, that is where, um, yeah, our, our yarn pop people are kind of stationed right now. Um, and it's great to kind of walk through there and see, you know, these gardens growing. Um, such creative people, it's lovely. Um, the, the felted bumblebees are just my favorite. I love it. Um, but we have people that are coming into the library to do work and assembling things. Um, so whenever the library is open, our, our, our hours are different day to day, but just look at our website, you can drop off. Or when we are doing our curbside pickup, our side door is open, you can always come to the door there and let people know that you need to um, get to the phalo room. Great. Yeah. yeah, and I think the only thing was just to, to put them into plastic baggies so they could be, you know, sealed and handled carefully. Um, and uh, yeah, no, but that's exciting. And if you're if you're in Plymouth or if you'll be visiting Plymouth in May, the whole month of May, we'll have these yarn yarn gardens up around town. So we're we're really excited that spring is here, and um, we're we're hoping that you know we'll have a really healthy and happy rest of the year. Um, so well, great. I think the only thing I um, I just wanted to say again was thank you so much, Julie, and. Um, I hope everyone who's watching, thank you for attending through Zoom, through Facebook, or if you're watching this later on our website, thank you um, for, for your interest. And we will uh, be meeting again on May 12th. So for the next month's lunchtime conversation, um, I'll be talking with Catherine Tarleton, textile conservator at 1230. And our website, PlymouthAntiquarian.org is where you can register for that. And we are just really looking forward to all of these wonderful ways to explore history and especially local history and um, Plymouth's past. So thank you so much, Julie, again, for being here, introducing us to the Bartlett Room and the History Room and all of your wonderful collections and um, good luck with everything. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for the opportunity. It's been great. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, we'll see you all next time. Have a great afternoon. <laughs> Bye-bye.